الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم طبطم وطابا مشاكم وتبوأتم من الجنة منزلا تدي إن شاء الله ورجعنا discuss a very important and very significant حديث which is حديث number four from and now is forty forty حديث and um, it's a very very significant and very important hadith because it talks about or deals with two uh, significant issues the first is the creation of man the creation of man uh, within or inside the womb of uh, you know the mothers and the second one is how to understand predestination how to understand the qadr and the predestination of qada or qadr and predestination and inshallah we're gonna try to delve deeply into the details of each one of them in order to derive and to gain some you know um, some lessons and how some lessons and uh, things that may be useful for us inshallah to live uh, by in this uh, this uh, present uh, life so let's start with uh, relating more reading the hadith in arabic first to get the blessings from the words of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله ابن مسعود حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المصدوق قال إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها uh, and this hadith is متفق عليه hadith صحيح for sure it's a متفق عليه hadith or an agreed upon uh, hadith that is related or combined in both in Bukhari and the Muslim and many other many other compilations or collections of hadith Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said the messenger of Allah the truthful and believe and an unbelieved one peace be upon him said the creation of each one of you is brought together in their mother's womb for 40 days in the form of a drop then they become a clot of uh, blood for a similar period, then a morsel of flesh for a similar period, then there is sent to him the angel who blows his soul into him and who is commanded with four matters. The angel is ordered to write their sustenance, lifespan, their actions, and if they will be happy or miserable. By the one besides whom there is no deity worthy of worship. One of you would do the actions of the people of paradise until there is mere, until there is merely a hand span between them and paradise. But what uh, what was predestined overtakes them, causing them to do actions of the people of hellfire, and they enter hellfire. Also, one of you would do the actions of the people of hellfire until they are merely a hand span away from hellfire, but what uh, uh, what was predestined overtakes them, causing them to do actions of the people of paradise and they enter paradise. Guys, the narrator of the hadith is Abdullah ibn, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. What do you know about him? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. What do you know about him? You want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, go ahead. He has the honor of killing, giving the final blow to Abu Jahal. Uh huh. Sahih. Mm, perfect. What else? Ian, the thought is very heated, Sister Sophia, you know, killing Abu Jahal. Okay, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, he said. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, this is Rida. He's uh, uh, spreading Islam more in Kufa. Aha, uh -huh, yes, he was sent. He was sent to Kufa to be the judge and the da'iyah and the scholar to teach everyone and educate them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about Islam. Perfect. What else? 
Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loved him, and Allah subhanahu wa taala loved him. Mm, perfect, perfect. Sahih, Sahih. What else? Is that my favorite? What else, guys? He was not the main stream of Makkah. He was a Bedouin, like he was outside. He was a shepherd. Uh huh. And, yes. And he was the shepherd of like for uh, for whom for whom Uqba. for for Uqba 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 ibn Abi Mu'ayt. Yes. And he was a keeper of uh, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sandals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. True. And sabak. <laughs> true, true. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. Barakallah fikum. Jazakallah khairan. You know a lot. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. so much about Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, inshallah. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he was a uh, highly esteemed companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was one of the earliest uh, reverse to Islam, one of the earliest who accepted Islam. Indeed, he was the, the sixth person to impress uh, uh, the faith of uh, Islam and to follow the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, he migrated to Abyssinia, Ethiopia, on two occasions, the first Hijra and the second Hijra, the first migration and the second migration to Abyssinia. And he uh, witnessed the battle of Badr with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he consistently joined the battles and the expeditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the campaigns in, you know, numerous battles and expeditions. And he never, never missed any of the campaigns with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, Sayyid Abdullah bin Mas'ud was renowned uh, for his uh, uh, trustworthiness. And uh, he was, he used to be a shepherd uh, for Uqba ibn Abi uh, Mu'ayt, as uh, Sister Sophia said, or mentioned. And he witnessed one of the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gently touched the udder of, um, of a small and dry and barren sheep, causing it to fill with milk instantly. And the Prophet وسلم, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Abdullah uh, ibn Mas'ud, they all uh, uh, drank from the uh, milk. Sayyidina uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, upon hearing the Quran from the mouth of the Prophet, from the honorable mouth of the Prophet وسلم, his heart was expanded with joy and unwavering faith and he accepted Islam uh, immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed knowledge upon uh, him and uh, uh, he became uh, the most uh, uh, eroded among the companions and he uh, excelled in both the Quran recitation and memorization of the uh, Quran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is reported to have gently touched his head and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ مُعَلَّمٌ you are a young man endowed with knowledge, knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one, um, one, one, one humorous uh, event is, uh, was when the companions or a group of the companions shared a laugh over uh, uh, the uh, slenderness of his legs and the small size of his uh, feet. Uh, uh, when he climbed it, you know, a, um, a palm tree to get some dates for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they were amused uh, uh, by, by that sight. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in response to that, he uh, uh, he told them uh, that, and he told Sayyidina Abdullah uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud himself that, in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, in the sight of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, these seemingly slender legs and small feet would carry greater weight on the scales of good deeds than the entire mountain of Ahad. So what concerns us, what concerns us should, shouldn't be how people look at us or how people uh, are looking at us. What should concern us, what we should be uh, uh, immensely uh, concerned is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us. Uh, what is the position that we have in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most important thing in this present life and in that uh, hereafter, as you all uh, know. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, though his, um, uh, uh, his, his body was uh, weak and he wasn't that, you know, that uh, big or have, you know, uh, big muscles, but he was very, very brave and very, very courageous. 
he was the first person to openly recite the Quran after the Prophet وسلم, within the uh, limits of the Kaaba itself, while all the Purtheists and the Mushrikeen were surrounding him and were surrounding the Kaaba, and they all gathered around him and they physically assaulted, uh, assaulted him to the extent that the other companions couldn't uh, couldn't recognize his front side from his back side uh, because of the the, the, the much much um, much blood that covered him uh, up. But Sayyidina Abdullah uh, uh, Ibn Abbas he vowed to continue the next day. So this tells us how courageous and how brave uh, he uh, was. In the Battle of Uhud, just as uh, Sister Sophia said, in the Battle of Uhud, he was the one who beheaded or, you know, he cut the head of uh, Abu uh, Jah, the uh, great, not the great, but the, the, the biggest, you know, the biggest enemy uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back then or at that, uh, uh, that time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the demise or the passing or the death of Abu Jahl that tyrant under the feet of uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Mas'ud. Uh, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he um, died during the era of the third caliph, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, and he uh, he died at the age of uh, 60, and he died in al Medina. and the, uh, um, uh, when he uh, became very seriously ill, all the companions, nearly all the companions and the followers visited him, led by Sayyidina Uthman, uh, ibn, Ab uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan himself, and throughout his illness, he voiced no complaints except for his own uh, sins, and uh, his funeral uh, prayer was led by Sayyidina uh, uh, Zubair, Zubair ibn al-Awwam, and then he was uh, buried uh, in al-Baqiyah al in al Medina al-Munawwara. This is a very short, um, very short account on the biography of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And uh, by the way, one of the scholars used to say, كَأَنَّ صَحَابَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ كَالنُّجُومِ كأن صحابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان نجوم بأيهم اقتديتم اهتديتم يعني he, 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 he says that the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are like uh, uh, shining shiny uh, or shining stars in the sky uh, if you follow any one of them you're going to be guided why? because they all follow the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all of them followed the uh, guidance of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as the Prophet وسلم, was described by Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha as being a walking Quran when she was when when she was asked about the character of the Prophet uh, وسلم, she said Quran. He was a walking Quran. His characteristics were uh, and uh, were a reflection or a, um, a representation of the Quran, and uh, thus were the Sahaba. The Sahaba copied and uh, uh, and they emulated the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in whatever he said and in whatever he uh, did sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa radi Allahu anhum ajma'in. We love the Sahaba and uh, we love the Sahaba because because they were the assets and the pillars upon which Islam was established. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed this whole message to us uh, uh, through his effort and through the effort and the, through the effort of the uh, Sahaba, no matter, um, no matter um, or regardless of the, uh, the obstacles and the challenges that they all encountered uh, uh, while doing uh, that. What about the position of this hadith? This hadith, the fourth hadith of an Nawawi, uh, 40 hadith. Um, we can start by saying that the authenticity of this hadith has been agreed on. And the entire ummah, the entire Muslim ummah has accepted this uh, hadith. And this hadith, as we said in the introduction, that this hadith is great as it deals with two important issues. The first issue is, how man is created in the womb of his or her mother. And the second issue is the issue of predestination or qadr and the absolute knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith, as you can see in the beginning, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud says, 
عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المصدوق الصادق المصدوق امام النووي commenting on this uh, on this uh, part on this description of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he is a صادق the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is the truthful one who is believed and this means that he is truthful in what he says he is truthful in what he says. So whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conveyed to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth and nothing but the truth. So al-sadiq, al-masduq, what does it mean to be al-masduq? That he is believed in terms of the novel revelation that he brings. So he himself is a truthful one. He himself is a sadiq. And whatever, and, and so whatever he uh, tells us is the truth and nothing but the truth. And at the same time, al masduq we believe him. We are, uh, we, uh, none of us should be hesitant. None of us should be hesitant when we hear an authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one should be hesitant to, uh, uh, to accept that hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, can uh, stipulate that the hadith is proved by the scholars of hadith to be an authentic uh, one. The Prophet وسلم, says, the creation of each one of you is brought together in their mother's womb. And this refers to how the creation is gathered together. And this hadith mentions four stages in the creation of humankind. The first stage is a drop of uh, sperm, a drop of sperm and then a blood clot, and then a chewed morsel, and then the soul is breathed into the uh, body. Let's take them one by one, very, very briefly, inshallah. The drop of sperm, which is called a mutfah, a mutfah, and this is the living sperm that the man releases into the womb of the, mother, of the, uh, of the woman, his wife, his spouse, for sure. And the first stage that the fetus passes through after the sperm fertilizes the egg. And this lasts for, for how many days, guys? This lasts for how many days? 40 days. 40, 40 days, perfect. The second stage is the blood clot, which is called al-alaqa, al-alaqa. And this is the second stage, and it lasts for huh? how many days? 40 days. Again, 40. 40 days, again, yes, perfect. And then, and it's called al-alaqa, that it sticks, you know, it sticks, it adheres to, or it sticks on the wall of the womb. That's why it's called al-alaqa, ta'alaq, okay? And then the uh, chewed morsel, which is al-mudra, and this is the third stage, and is called as uh, uh, as such, due to its size, as in it resembles the size of the mouth of the chewing uh, person, and it occurs for 40 days as well. And thereafter, the angel comes and flows the uh, soul uh, uh, into uh, that uh, fetus or into that uh, new uh, creation or human beings. Guys, what do we know about, about the ruh? What do we know about the ruh? The ruh that is breathed into the uh, fetus. What do we know about the ruh? Uh, it will never die. It will leave our body and go to the barzakh. Okay, but I'm asking about the nature of the ruh itself. What do we know about the nature of the ruh? It's, it's on Islam, on Iman or Fitra. Okay, the ruh, the ruh. Hmm? Okay, the ruh was one, the ruh was one of the uh, things that the Jews um advised uh, the Qurayshids upon a request from the Qurayshids themselves. And Uqab ibn Abi Mu'ayt was, Mu'ayt was involved, by the way, in that, uh, in that uh, incident as well. He was sent along with another man by the Qurayshids to the people of Al-Madina, Al the Jews in Al-Madina, seeking their help how to challenge the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they went to them and they told them that you are knowledgeable about the divine books and you have knowledge. So assist us, help us to, con to confront and to challenge that man, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Jews told them that, okay, ask him about these questions. Ask him about these uh, 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 three questions. If he responds with the correct answer, so he is a prophet and you may, you may follow him. But if he, 
answers you, you know, wrong, if he gives you the wrong answer, so he is not a pro, he's an imposter, and you can do whatever you want with him. And they um, they told them to ask him about the people of the cave, and about the man who walked the earth, who traveled the earth, uh, as you all know. And the third question was regarding a ruh. It was about the nature of the ruh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed after uh, 15 days, Surah Al-Kahf upon the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in that Surah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answered them, gave them the answers to two of the questions about Ahl Al-Kahf, the people of the cave, and about Dhul Qarnayni. But as for the answer to the question regarding the Ruh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala didn't reveal it in that Surah, but it was later on revealed in Surah Al-Isra. Huh? Who, can, who can recall the ayah? Anyone? In Surah Al-Isra, Al-Ruh. Guys, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Jazakumullah khayran. Wa yis'alunaka anil ruh. Who was that? Who was that? Who gave the answer? Arwa. Jazakumullah khayran, Arwa. Okay. Wa yis'alunaka anil ruh. Qul al-ruh min amri rabbi. Wa ma utitum min al-ilmi illa qalil. And they ask you, O Muhammad, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the ruh, about the spirit, about the soul. Okay, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ الْرُوحِ قُلُ الْرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي The knowledge, the knowledge of the ruh is with my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا You were given but little of knowledge. Whatever you have of knowledge is little, uh, uh, is, 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 is little compared to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know nothing about the ruh except that which Allah uh, told us through the Qur'an or through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu feekum ajma'in, masha'Allah, masha'Allah. Okay, so this hadith or based on this hadith, the soul is or the ruh is breathed into the body after 120 days. 120 days, right? right? Okay, we have the mutfa, we have the alaqa, and then we have the mudha. Uh, 40 and for, 40, 40, 40, this makes 120 days. And then thereafter, the soul is breathed into the body. Right, guys? Okay. Tight. What about, what about the stage of the dust? What about the stage of the dust? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani Al-Quran, in many different places and uh, uh, throughout the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many hadith talks about the creation of man from dust or from clay, right? How can we, how can we combine, how can we understand these, uh, the, uh, all these stages? How can we understand this? That we are created in the wombs of our mothers, but at the same time, we are created from dust or from clay. How can we understand this? Our sustenance and livelihood comes from the earth. Yes, true, true. This is one perfect, perfect. Yes. So for the parents to be able to, the father and mother to be able to do that, right? To reproduce, they have to, you know, to, to get sustenance and sustenance is from the earth. Yes, perfect. But there is another thing. There is another thing, which is that the stage of dust, that stage of dust, okay? It comes first for sure, right? The stage of dust, it deals with the father of humankind. That is Sayyidina Adam, right? The father of mankind, the father of humankind. Sayyidina Adam, he was created from dust. He was created from, right? From clay with no father or mother, right? But as for the other three stages, they deal with the children of Adam, and they show how they are created in the wombs of their mothers. This is how we should understand this. So there is no confusion. There is no uh, contradiction whatsoever. Okay, guys. Okay. I have another question for you. What is the benefit of knowing these stages? What is the benefit of knowing these stages? What do we get from this knowledge? Mm. Mm. Anyone? Anyone other than Sister Sophia? <laughs> Anyone? 
we get our position uh, in front of uh, all humankind. We are very little thing, but we um, feel ourselves very vicious. Uh, that is, uh, I think, it is perfect. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah, this very... is a very good, very good answer. Exactly. Mahayran. Exactly. Mahayran. To be humble, right? For human beings to be humble, to see our origin, right? And, and this is this this needs you know uh, this needs a whole uh, uh, a separate uh, you know session. أولك نطفة مذرة وآخرك جيفة قذرة وأنت بينهما تحمل العذرة. You know we have to look into our origin in order not to be haughty, in order not to you know to raise ourselves upon you know uh, uh, or or others. Yes, yes. جزاك الله خير. What else? What else, guys? The animals don't get the roof, it's just humans. Yeah, the animals don't get what? The one? 120 days, the roof is blown into the humans. It, it, it differs. It differs from one species to another, right? Right? Because we have some animals or some creatures who give birth after days and others after, you know, months, several months. And an elephant, for example, and um, I believe I have heard that, Elephants, uh, uh, elephants became pregnant for uh, a full year, something like that. So it's more than the nine nine months that uh, humans have. So it's different. It differs from one species to another, and it's all you know. All this falls you know within the kingdom and the realm of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Subhanallah. لا يسأل عن ما يفعل وهم يسألون سبحانه. Okay, guys. This knowledge is beneficial. For uh, for us that when we know the uh, the three stages, okay, and the stage of the soul being breathed into the fetus, this is important in matters pertaining to uh, miscarriages, okay, Al right, sakat, and preying on the uh, dead uh, uh, fetuses. Should we uh, should we pray? Should we give the perform the funeral prayer when we have a dead uh, fetus or not? Right. Uh, because if the fetus was uh, one that died before its soul was breathed into it, then we do not pray the funeral prayer on it. And as for uh, uh, if it died after the soul was breathed into it, then we pray on the dead uh, fetus. Okay, so we have we have some you know uh, jurisprudential or fiqhi issues that are uh, uh, um, that are closely related to this knowledge. Also, it's um, it's impermissible to abort a pregnancy in its various stages unless one has a legal reason and it is done within very strict limits. We have to have scholar, a scholar and we have to have a Muslim trustworthy physician, right? Who decides whether this pregnancy is dangerous for the woman, for the mother or, uh, or not, right? So, uh, if the pregnancy is in the first stage, um, like if it is within the first 40 days and there is a religious benefit or prevention of a harmful matter in aborting the pregnancy, then it is permissible. But as for aborting due to uh, fear of hardship in raising the children or fear of incapability in caring for their living and educational expenses or fear for their future or because um, the parents think that uh, they have enough children, then it is or uh, it is impermissible. It is haram. It is unlawful to do uh, that. Okay, guys. Then in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, by the one besides whom there is no deity worthy of worship. One of you would do the actions of the people of paradise until there is merely a hand span between them and paradise. But what, uh, what was predestined overtakes them, causing them to do actions of the people of hellfire, and they enter hellfire. Also, one of you would do the actions of the people of hellfire until they are merely a hand span away from hellfire, but what was predestined overtakes them, causing them to do actions of the people of paradise, and they enter paradise, right? Guys, upon hearing that, upon hearing that, 
one must conceptualize this issue correctly because people or some people make this hadith as a reason to quit righteous actions. They say, what is the purpose behind doing actions? If I continuously do actions, then predestination overtakes me with something I dislike. I would be of the people of hellfire. What is the purpose behind actions? Why are we commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are commanded or advised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to do or to perform good actions uh, uh, when everything is predestined? Those who are going to enter uh, uh, Jannah or Paradise are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are going to be admitted into Hellfire are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the use of uh, making any effort? What is the use of doing any good uh, uh, good deeds how can we respond how can we respond to this inquiry guys so predestination is not a particular time like i mean according to hadith it says the maximum or the the worst case scenario that even near the near the death you can uh, the destiny can take you over no one no but... one no one knows no one knows exactly when he will die right he or she die right no one yes and the destiny can be like like the destiny would be my action during whatever is spent in the middle or in the end right like it can overtake me in right in the middle as well but mm -hmm. if I just assume, according to Hadith, that I have to wait until the end, that, that might be a problematic. Okay, okay, okay. Jazakallah khairan. What else, guys? What else? How can we respond to such an inquiry? What is the use of doing or performing good deeds while everything is predestined? Why? Okay. <laughs> Our okay. good deeds can, go ahead, go ahead, sister. Our good yeah. deeds, because with our good deeds, we can change our destiny. Is it? Uh -huh. is the... mm, okay, maybe. Okay, Ma -ma no one knows, right? No one knows. Okay, yeah. yeah, because I was reading this hadith last night, so be prepared to, to know Perfect. when you explain. Then I, I cannot get anything from it, so I'm waiting for your response. Barakallahu feek. And Noshin no wanted to I'll try. Something I'll try, inshallah. Uh, yes, sir, Sophia? What, what were you saying? Noshin was, uh, no was saying something as well. Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, I, I, I thought that uh, Allah gave us a uh, choice of uh, doing good or bad. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it's only uh, human beings can do good or bad deeds. Uh, it's about choice, uh, and he gave it's about he choice. Gave... Choice, you you said choice, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's okay. Our choice. We can um, take a shrat uh, mustaqim, or you can go to the hellfire. Perfect. You have choice. No, okay, okay. So uh, one chooses the uh, right path or the straight path. One chooses to follow that path, and another person chooses the uh, uh, the, the other one, the 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 evil one. Huh? What happens to them? Because this is the answer. What happens to them? If both choose, if both choose whatever they like, what happens to them? What happens? What happens next? Allah makes it easy for both to go through or to lead the life they chose for themselves, right? Yeah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guided the people or showed the people the two paths, the uh, path of uh, uh, guidance and the path of misguidance, the path of goodness and the path of evil, and made it, you know, possible for us to choose for ourselves. And as I always say, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us free choosers, we're going to be accountable for each and every decision that we make, right? And for each and every thing that we do, right, guys? And also, another, let me let me add this. Uh, uh, for one, for one to answer for, for us, you know, for Muslims to answer a question like that, it's it's a big question, by the way. So we have to gather, we have to gather all evidences together. We have to gather all evidences together, okay, in order for us to be able to understand something like that. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, for example. 
he narrated the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu This is a hadith. This is an authentic hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib said, while we were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Ali and some group of the Sahaba, they were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were in a funeral procession in uh, Baqi' al-Gharda, in Al-Baqi'ah. And the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat down and uh, uh, they, they sat around him and the Prophet saw, uh, uh, had a small stick in his hand and he bent his head and started scraping the ground with that stick. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is none among you and no created soul but his, but has his place written for him either in paradise or in the hellfire and also has his happy or miserable fate in the hereafter written for him. So one of the Sahaba, one of the Sahaba asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Allah's Messenger, shall we depend upon what is written for us and give, uh, and give up doing good deeds for... <coughs> For whoever among us is destined to be fortunate in the hereafter will join the fortunate peoples. And whoever among us is destined to be miserable will do such deeds as are characteristic, characteristic of the people who are destined to misery. The Prophet ﷺ said, Those who are destined to be happy in the hereafter will find it easy and pleasant to do the deeds characteristic of those destined to happiness, while those who are to be among the miserable in the hereafter will find it easy to do the deeds characteristic of those destined to misery. Then the Prophet ﷺ recited, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى As for he who gives and fears Allah, and believes in that best reward, we will ease him toward ease. He, 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 he chose first. He chose for himself, right? He gives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he fears he had taqwa in his heart, right? And he believes in the best reward. He believes in the day of judgment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 eases for him or makes things easy for him, makes good things easy for him, right? And on the other hand, But as for he who withholds, withholds whatever he has, withholds the, the blessings and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him and didn't spend on others and didn't uh, uh, become, you know, charitable or generous with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he considers himself free of need. Billahi alaykum. Yani, is there anyone, is there anyone who is free of need uh, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there anyone who doesn't, uh, 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 who, 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 who doesn't rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything? SubhanAllah. And denies the best reward. He denies all about the resurrection. We will ease him toward difficulty. So you choose and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for you according to what you have chosen for yourself, right? Sayyidina uh, Imran ibn Hussain reported that it was said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, are those who are going, are those who are going to hellfire and those who are going to paradise known, are they known to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, for sure, yes, certainly. It was said, then, why do, why do those who do actions do so? Why do we have to work? Why do we have to do or to perform good actions? Look at the response of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ Again, كُلٌّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ Everyone will be facilitated towards what they are created for. Whatever you choose for yourself, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala makes it easy for you, makes it accessible, makes it feasible for you. Okay, guys, understood, guys? So if we say, yani, how are we to understand the previous narration? One, first, one has, one must perform righteous actions since abandoning actions results in hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and those who strive for us, we will surely guide them to our ways. 
and indeed Allah is with the doers of good. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا زَادَهُمْ هُدَوْ وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And those, and those who were uh, 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 guided, uh, those who are guided, uh, He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increases them in guidance and gives them their righteousness. So the meaning here is that the one who puts forth the means to attaining guidance and entering paradise will be guided and entered into paradise by the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, there are some people that do actions of the people of paradise, but they have deviations in their inward states, in their hearts, and these things are not apparent. So this deviation has its time and place and becomes apparent to everyone's eyes or even if it is not made you know, apparent or even to everyone. So the things that the slave was hiding become apparent and that shows on their actions. Then it is concluded that they enter the hell uh, fire. Uh, Imam Ibn Atta is secondary in his Hikam al Atta'iyah, the pearls of Imam al Secondary. Uh, or Ibn Atta is secondary, he says, من علامات النجح في النهايات الرجوع إلى الله في البدايات One of the heralds of success in ending is returning to Allah most high in, uh, in, the, in, in beginnings. This means that if you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you do the things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will accept that from you and will make it easy for you to continue on that and will conclude your life with uh, that. SubhanAllah. And by the way, there is another narration. There is another narration for this hadith. Yani, uh, as we mentioned, this hadith is an agreed upon hadith, right? It's mentioned in Al-Bukhari and the Muslim. In Sahih Muslim, in Sahih Muslim, there is another narration with an addition. There is a phrase that is added to that addition in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إن إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيما يبدو للناس فيما يبدو للناس فيما يبدو للناس it means to people apparently to people apparently a person will do the actions of the people of paradise and to people apparently a person will do the actions of the people of hellfire so we judge we we judge and we should never judge others by the way and we learn this from this hadith you should never judge anyone we leave, we are dua la qudah. We are calling people and we are inviting people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But we leave the judgment or their judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we, we cannot split the hearts or split the uh, uh, bosoms of others to see what's in their hearts. Whether there is iman or kufr or nifaq, no one is able, no one is capable of doing that except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Even the Prophet وسلم, couldn't do that. Even the Prophet وسلم, couldn't do that. Couldn't do that unless Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, 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 um, uh, tells him, right? So, okay, you know that there were munafiqin, right? You know that there were munafiqin or hypocrites during the uh, lifetime of the Prophet وسلم. The Prophet وسلم, didn't figure out and didn't realize their names by himself, but it was Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who sent Sayyidina Jibreel to the Prophet وسلم, with a list, a list with the names, right? And Sayyidina Hudayfa, Sayyidina Hudayfa ibn, ibn al-Yaman, he was the, uh, uh, the keeper of the secrets of the Prophet وسلم. You know why? You know why uh, he, he was given that title? Because the Prophet وسلم, entrusted him with the names of the Munafiqeen, right? So it's something, you know, tawqifi, something we got only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else knows about uh, that. So maybe, maybe we see some, someone who apparently is a vicious and an evil man, but we do not know about his privacy life, uh, about his privacy or about his private life. Maybe, maybe, he, maybe, I'm, I'm saying maybe, uh, uh, he is, you know, doing evil things in front of people. But when he goes home, he regrets and he weeps and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist him. And he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for forgiveness. But, you know, his soul and his evil soul uh, uh, overcomes him, maybe. So he is struggling. And this struggle, and this struggle is not is not going to be 
uh, is not going to be wasted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards whomever he wants subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe, maybe, maybe we see someone who is doing good, good things. <coughs> Maybe we do some. We, we see someone who who does or who performs good deeds in front of people, right? And we think that he's a good man. He's the Sheikh of Islam. He's the you know the leader of all Muslims. He's the most knowledgeable person. But in his private life, he you know commits sins away from people's sides. And the only one who knows that is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right, guys? So we don't judge people. We shouldn't be judging any. Uh, any uh, anyone let's uh, i'm gonna conclude inshallah in, in 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 two or three minutes maximum and we're gonna spend the remaining time in uh, receiving you know uh, questions inshallah so we learned from this significant hadith that we should always ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us steadfast in our faith and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of all creation, the best of all creation, the Prophet of Allah, the last Prophet, the, the seal of the Prophets and the Messenger of, of Allah, used to uh, always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his heart firm and steadfast on the right path. He used to say, Ya muqallib al qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O controller of the hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O controller of the hearts, make my heart steadfast in your religion also and and i like this hadith by the way this coming hadith it's um it's a it's a it's a beautiful hadith the hadith says okay before the hadith we 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 need we always need to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 to, to, to seek refuge uh, uh, from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ending our life with a bad deed Okay, that we die while we are doing something sinful or something that is, you know, detestable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, uh, may Allah forbid. The hadith said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا عَسَّلَهُ وَهَلْ تَدْرُونَ مَا عَسَّلَهُ They said, قَالُوا اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ ورسوله أعلم قال يفتح الله عز وجل له عملا صالحا بين يدي موته حتى يرضى عنه جيرانه أو من حوله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says in an authentic hadith and it's a والله a beautiful hadith. He said that if Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants goodness for a servant, if Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants goodness to a servant, Allah سبحانه وتعالى do you know what does this mean? The Sahaba said, "No, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yafthu Allah azza wa jalla hu amalan sahihan bi nadi ma." Immediately before his death, before that person's death, Allah سبحانه وتعالى opens for him. Allah سبحانه وتعالى makes it possible for him to do something good. Okay, until his neighbors or and those around him are pleased with him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes his, takes his life. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends his life for him while performing good deeds. Okay, but subhanallah. So, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا عَسَّلَهُ He honeys him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honeys that uh, uh, as, as if he is coating him with honey. Subhanallah Rabbil Alameen. Yeah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honey all of us, each and every one of us, and all our beloved uh, uh, beloved uh, ones. I'm done, guys. I have, you know, many other things, but uh, I'd like to give you, you know, a chance if you have any uh, questions, inshallah Rabbil Alameen. Barakallah if you come. Okay, go ahead, guys. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. So, so you said like uh, the fiqh uh, uh, issue uh, regarding the one twenty days to be prayed or not. Does it mean that the body is not like we pray for the ruh, not the body? Because before that is just merely a body. Once the ruh is there, we pray. So we only pray for the ruh, not for the body. Uh, no, no, again, again, sister Sophia, please. Again, 
Would you please repeat okay. the question? So because you I said missed, that I missed, I missed the, the first words. Yeah, you 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 said that like after one twenty days you have to pray for 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 miscarriage, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. before that is is not needed. So does it mean that uh, the praying for the body is is just actually for praying for the ruh, the soul, not not the body itself? Okay, it's um, you know, it's it's just like one of your philosophical questions, okay, and I like them for sure, Yanni. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter, Yanni, to us, Yanni. You know, Yanni. Subhanallah, Yanni. Man is honored. Man is honored, right? Warakadi karamna bani Adama. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala honored the human beings. But at the same time, we have you know uh, rulings, Islamic rulings, and these rulings are explained to us. Uh, through the uh, scholars of fiqh and usul al-fiqh, right? So uh, uh, they agreed that if we have a fetus, a miscarriage, or a fetus that, you know, uh, a, a dead, um, you know, uh, uh, they call it a saqat, uh, a dead, uh, dead baby be, before his, uh, his birth or be, before the delivery. So if he doesn't reach that... Uh, that stage in which the soul is breathed into it, so uh, uh, no uh, prayer, no funeral prayer is is to be performed on uh, on him. Okay, but I I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. The thing that makes us human beings and the thing that makes us honored in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the ruh, because the ruh is from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, so it's a, a divine thing. It's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is what makes us different from you know any other creatures. And also a taklif. This means that the responsibilities and the obligations that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us, and the task and the the the, the, the assignment that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave us to worship Him and to you know. Uh, 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 and to give not to give life but to 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 maintain the life in this whole uh, uh, universe as uh, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but yes yeah I can say yes yeah need to your uh, question Barakallah yes exactly okay guys anyone else any questions Okay, so if you don't have any question, okay, yeah, go I, ahead. I, I can go for the second question. Okay. So if uh, uh, the, the destiny is like uh, we have to we have to have the iman on the destiny, uh, so sh should my like uh, uh, should it be a takeaway from this hadith that the jannah and the hell is predestined, and then. But I have to do good. I have to do only the good all my life. I don't like I, I if I believe I shouldn't I shouldn't focus on what I'll get in the hereafter, but at the same time, I am supposed to do only the good. Yes, true, true. Ma, you are not okay. No one can okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he made us accountable, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us accountable for everything, everything that we say and everything that we do. And we don't have any control about the reward or the punishment in the hereafter. Am I right? No one has okay. any control over that. But you have control over yourself. You have control over what you do and what you, you know, your choices, your choices in this life. And this is the thing that you're going to be held accountable for. This is the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about. What did you do with the things that I gave you? Right? How did you respond in such and such situation? How, uh, what did you do when uh, so and so did uh, blah, blah, blah. Right? So we're going to be questioned about all of these things. So we have to concern ourselves with our current state. We have to concern ourselves with our choices, our personal preferences and what we do and what we say and leave everything else to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, enshrine us with his mercy to you know to to 
to cover us with his mercy in this present life and in the hereafter because without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one is going to be admitted into uh, paradise. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells the sahaba, None of you will enter, none of you will be admitted into paradise just mere, just because of the good deeds that you do. They said, Hatta anta ya Rasulullah, uh, even, even you, e even does this apply to you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, hatta ana, this applies to me as well. Illa an yatagammadani Allahu Azza wa Jal birahmatihi. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers me with his mercy. So anyone who will enter paradise is going to be entering paradise with the mercy of Allah through the gate of Allah's mercy. But we have to, we have to uh, show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah sees everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to show him subhanahu wa ta'ala ta that we are obedient. Right? That we are obedient and that we are not sinful and that we try our best to uh, follow the guidance of Allah and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is all that is needed and required from us to show that sincerely and to do it as much as we can. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ إِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ أَمْرٍ فَانْتَهُ uh, uh, and uh, uh, when I forbid you to do, when I forbid you to do something, shun away from it, avoid it, completely avoid it. Okay, but when I command you to do something, something uh, uh, good, do it as much as you can, do it as much as possible. Because لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسْعَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't ta uh, uh, doesn't task any soul, doesn't task any human being with anything that goes beyond his or her capacity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything. And that's this is one of the characteristics of the sharia, of Allah, sharia of Islam, that anything that is ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything that is command, you know, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa guided us to do or ordered us to do, fall within our capacity so it's a very realistic religion very realistic sharia it doesn't have any you know any um, it doesn't have any impossible or semi impossible actions or uh, things any human can do it and that's why that's why um, all that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did and all that the sahaba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did uh, um, any other man can do. And um, Shayt Sayyid Qutb says in Al-Zulal and this deen, Islam, deen al Islam, uh, though it's a divine, though it's a divine message, it's a divine message. We all agree on that, right? Islam is a divine message, but it cannot be established on earth without the effort, without the efforts of human beings. هو دين بشري هو دين إلهي لكنه لا يقوم إلا بجهد البشر. Though it's a divine message, it's a divine faith, but it cannot be established. It cannot be established on earth without the efforts done or exerted by human beings. Okay, Sister Sofia. It creates one more question. Uh Okay. Just just one minute. Can can we give chance to others? To ask? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Guys, any questions? Okay, okay, okay. So, Sophia, just one final um, question. Make it short, please. Because yes. we, we don't, I don't want to delay, you know, people because so, people have, you know, uh, arrangements. So, and, yeah, okay. So, six, uh, six uh, pillars of Iman. Uh, so, uh, in that, first is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and last is destiny. Right, like if we see the 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 tertib of that, right? So and in another narration, yes, to believe in predestination yeah. with so, its evil, uh, with with its good and so, evil aspects. Yes. So how would it be wrong, like if my belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His justice is more than the destiny? I don't like if I stop caring about that. Towards the end, I might be predestined for the for the hell, right? If I remove that, like I mean, I can believe I believe in that that it's my predestiny, 
either Jannah or hell. But if I believe more in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, compared to my destiny, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just and uh, he will He will uh, do the justice with me. If I have that belief more, would it what, be wrong? What do you mean, what do you mean to, to believe more in that? What do you have? What do okay, you... Allah, is the, is, Allah is the creator of the destiny, right? So yeah. destiny is there. I believe in that. But regarding my destiny, should I care or not? Should I just keep caring about... No, no, no. Okay, about... okay, okay. You shouldn't be caring. You shouldn't be concerned with, as I said, with the outcome. Okay, though, though, okay, guys, guys, yani, as Ibn Taymiyyah said, yani, or, um, or it was Ibn Al-Qayyim, Ibn Al-Qayyim al -Jawzi. he said, we, uh, yani, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, within two wings. Yani, our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is within two wings. One of them is uh, uh, al-khawf, fear from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other wing is al-raja, hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within these two wings and at the same time we have to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون الله ورسوله أحب إليه مما سواهما. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an authentic hadith None of you will be a true or a faithful believer unless he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger more than anything and anyone else. Okay? More than anyone and anything else. So the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be given precedence over anything else. Even, uh, 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 even yani, uh, so uh, I, 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 I might be aligning with Sister Safi's understanding now, even you know uh, uh, belief in the you know the, the pillars of uh, of iman or the articles of uh, faith or iman so we love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe in him subhanahu wa ta'ala and but you know as a sign of our love for allah and as a sign of our obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we follow whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to do and part of that is to believe in the six articles of Iman, and one of them is to have faith in predestination, right? Right. Yeah. Thank you. Barakallahu fiik. Jazakum la khairan. Jazakum la khairan. Thank you so much, guys. Yani, I can, uh, uh, I can see that uh, most of you are not, you know, interacting uh, with the questions that uh, we put, uh, you know, under the videos. But please, yani, please try to have. Um, Yeah, I need to spare a minute for uh, doing that because this will help, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. This will help you, you know, uh, understand more what we are discussing here, inshallah. And the questions that I put there are, you know, carefully, yani, carefully uh, chosen. Allah Musta'an. Jazakumullah khairan. We conclude uh, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر جزاكم الله خيرا See you next week إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير مع السلامة